My name is Casey Swank, and I'm an archivist and education specialist at the Tennessee State Library and Archives. Today, I'll be talking about Cornelia Fort, a Nashville socialite and pilot who during World War II became the United States' first female pilot to die while serving on active duty. Cornelia Clark Fort was born on February 5th, 1919 to a wealthy family in Nashville, Tennessee. She was one of five children. She had three older brothers and one younger sister. Her father, Rufus Fort Sr., was a surgeon and co-founded the National Life Accident Insurance Company. Her mother, Louise Clark Fort, was an avid gardener and helped found the Garden Club of Nashville and the Children's Museum. After attending Sarah Lawrence College in New York, Cornelia returned to Nashville, where she rebelled against her life as a rich socialite. She wanted to do something more with her life than attend parties and social club meetings. After taking her first ride in a small two-seater airplane, she was hooked and knew she had found her calling. Cornelia began taking flying lessons and by 1940, she had earned her private and commercial pilot's licenses faster than anyone in Nashville had before. She also earned her instructor's qualifications and started teaching other Nashvilleans, both men and women, how to fly. She was the city's first female flight instructor. In 1941, with World War II raging in Europe for the past two years, President Franklin Roosevelt created the Civilian Pilots Training Program to build up America's small flying industry in case the United States had to enter the war. Cornelia signed up as a civilian or non-military flight instructor. And after spending some time at Fort Collins, Colorado, she moved to Honolulu, Hawaii in October, 1941 to train male pilots to prepare them for future service in the military. On the morning of December 7th, 1941, Cornelia Fort was in the air training a new pilot when they almost collided with an oncoming plane. After taking the controls away from her trainee to avoid the crash, she noticed that the plane was Japanese, not American. Turning toward Pearl Harbor, she saw black smoke rising and Japanese planes dropping bombs on the ships and buildings below. Having been one of the first civilians to witness the infamous attack on Pearl Harbor that would launch the United States into World War II, Cornelia quickly landed her plane while avoiding enemy fire and waited for her fellow teachers and trainees to reach the airport hangar. Two planes never returned. Since non-military flights in Hawaii were banned after the Pearl Harbor attack, Cornelia return, returned to the mainland United States. She went on speaking tours and promoted the sale of war bonds to pay for the American war effort until the federal government established the Women's Auxiliary Ferrying Squadron, known as the WAFs, in September 1942. Miss Fort was the second woman in the entire country to sign up for the WAFs which required female pilots to fly newly built airplanes from factories to military airfields so they could be used in the war. This was traditionally a man's job, but the federal government realized that they needed every male pilot they could get to fly in combat missions overseas. Cornelia insisted that, quote, every woman who flies releases a man to fight. Sadly, on March 21st, 1943, while ferrying an airplane from a factory in California to a military base in Texas, Cornelia Fort's left wing was hit by another pilot, and she was not able to correct her plane before it crashed, killing her instantly. At the time, she was one of the WAF's most accomplished pilots, and she was the first female pilot to die while on active duty for the U.S. military. She was just 24 years old. Shortly before her death, Cornelia wrote of her experiences at Pearl Harbor 
and encourage women to earn their pilot's licenses and serve their country in the WAFs. She knew that she and her fellow female pilots would have to work twice as hard to be taken seriously in the military, but she said of her work, quote, I have yet to have a feeling which approaches in satisfaction that of having signed, sealed, and delivered an airplane for the United States Army. She knew that female pilots were just as capable as men and spent her short life proving that. Her piece, titled At Twilight's Last Gleaming, was published in the Woman's Home Companion shortly before her death. It was republished in newspapers across the country and overseas, inspiring countless women to earn their pilot's licenses. Over 1,000 women completed training and served in the WAFs and the group that came after it, the Women Air Force Service Pilots, or WASP, between 1942 and 1944. In 1977, President Jimmy Carter signed into law the GI Improvement Act of 1977, which finally classified the women who served in the WAFs and the WASP during World War II as military veterans, giving them the support services provided by the United States Department of Veterans Affairs. In 1996, the Tennessee State Library and Archives started the Tennessee World War II Veterans Survey Project to celebrate the state's 200th anniversary and to establish a more complete record of Tennessee's military veterans. That year, Cornelia Fort's older brother, Rufus Fort Jr., a military veteran himself, completed a veteran survey for Cornelia since she was legally classified as a veteran noting that his sister faced, quote, much opposition from male pilots during her service, but that she, quote, took it in stride. Cornelia Fort pushed back against the societal expectations of her gender in the 1940s, encouraging other women to learn to fly and serve during a time of war. The service of the WAFs and the WASPs were very important to the American military effort during World War II. Their work in ferrying airplanes freed up male Air Army Air Force pilots to fight in Europe and the Pacific. While her life was cut tragically short, Cornelia Ford's legacy lives on to serve as an inspiration to female pilots in Tennessee and across the country. If you would like to look at more primary source documents related to Cornelia Fort or other Tennessee military veterans, please check out our online catalog, the Tennessee Virtual Archive, or come visit the Tennessee State Library and Archives in person yourself. Thank you.